going to be recording this, so I just want to let you know that. And uh, it will be available um, on our League of Women Voters website uh, after tonight so that you can come back and listen to the presentation. We're so grateful to have you here. I'm Erica Nelson, co-president of our League of Women Voters, Glen Ellen. And the people that you see here on the screen or will see are facilitating a portion of our meeting. This is a very special day, August 26th, 1920, Women's Equality Day, the certification of the 19th Amendment. In a few minutes, members of our 100th Anniversary Committee will share some of the history of this special day. Hello, I'm Kristen Malone, and I'm co-president, along with Erica, of League of Women Voters of Glen Ellen. For those of you who are new to the League of Women Voters, we are a nonpartisan organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in government. We work to increase the understanding of major public policy issues and influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League does not support any candidate or political party. And while we are celebrating our 100th anniversary all year long, Congress designated August 2020 as National Women's Suffrage Month. So here are some of our Glen Ellen League events coming up. The Village of Glen Ellen presented a proclamation signed by Village President Diane McGinley commemorating the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, showing their support for the work of the League of Women Voters of Glen Ellen. Kristen Malone was there to accept that via Zoom and also speak about our league that evening. So thank you, Kristen. Our 100th anniversary window display at String Theory Yarn Company in downtown Glen Ellen is available for public viewing August 23rd to the 30th. The display includes a suffragist era dress with a purple, white, and gold Votes for Women sash, a 100th anniversary quilt created by Glen Ellen League member Lynn Bruno featuring suffragist colors. There are also posters of the history of the League and the text of the 19th Amendment. The bookstore is selling women's history books. I have a couple behind me on screen here that I just purchased. And the Glen Ellen Library also has a suffrage display of books. 100 lawn signs celebrating 100 years of voting have been popping up at League members' homes from Glen Ellen to Geneva. The sign utilizes an original suffrage poster and adds the 100 year commemorative logo from the League. All right, let's get serious here. <laughs> <laughs> let's raise our glasses, whatever glass you have, and let's toast all the women who came before us and fought for the right to vote for 72 years. Cheers. Cheers. All right, well, I'm actually drinking water. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. And what the next item on the agenda is that we would like to welcome Allison Hayes. She is one of our um, esteemed members, co-chair of the 100th Anniversary Committee. Allison? Thank you, Kristen. In February, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters. Today, August 26th has been designated as Women's Equality Day because this is the 100th anniversary of the adoption of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. This amendment prohibits the federal and state governments from denying the right to vote to citizens of the United States on the basis of sex. During this 100th anniversary year, much has been written and spoken about the courageous women who were active in the suffragist movement and in the formation of the League of Women Voters. All the attention they will get for their sacrifices and accomplishments during this year is richly deserved. Perhaps, though, we should consider the men who also took part in the extension of the franchise. We recognize the fact that over 50% of state legislatures, made up almost entirely of men, voted to pass the 19th Amendment in state after state. In addition, 
over 1,000 men marched at the back of the New York parade, supporting the women physically and emotionally, sharing in the ridicule and abuse of the crowds who gathered to watch. In an anonymous piece from the Library of Congress entitled simply, Him, one supportive husband writes about his experience he reports his feelings of shame and embarrassment as he marched in New York behind the women, hearing the catcalls and jeers of thousands of spectators who called him sissy or handpecked and urged him to go home and wash the dishes. This particular man has not always been so sure that women should have the vote. He writes about attending a dinner party sometime previously where one of the other male guests was asked if he thought women should vote. That other man had answered, of course I do. And if they hadn't been such damn fools, they would have been doing it long ago. On the way home that night, our author's wife asked him the same question. He knew that whatever he answered, his wife would ask the reason for his answer. She was no damn fool, he says, and she never accepted easy answers or excuses. He had given this set a question, he had never given this question a second thought in his whole life. His answer after holding his breath for half a minute was, yes, I do believe they should vote. Why, she asked. His answer was that both the revolutionary and civil wars had been fought to ensure the end of slavery, both political and economic, and that those wars were fought on behalf of all the people of the United States. He couldn't accept the obviously false argument that women aren't people, therefore, he reasoned, women should vote. She must have accepted his answer because he writes no more about this conversation. He ends the story expressing his admiration for his wife. He reports she didn't stop her education with finishing school, but is now studying the politics of China, the economics of Australia. She has gone pretty thoroughly into street cleaning problems with the town's Department of Public Works Engineers, future league study group member. <laughs> He quotes Solomon, who when speaking of this type of woman said, her price is above rubies. I don't imagine for a moment that all the women who struggled to gain the vote had husbands as supportive as this one, but it's nice to know that at least some of them did. We appreciate those men not only for their support of the just cause, but also for assisting the dedicated women they were fortunate enough to have married. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. That was wonderful. So many stories and our thanks, particularly for the, um, all the work that the 100th Anniversary Committee has done all year long, and we've still got a few months to go. So thank you. So we'll welcome now Rita Doyle, also a co-chair of our 100th Anniversary Committee. Rita, I'm gonna unmute you. Here I am up here in the corner. Uh, good evening and thank you to everyone who supported our 100th anniversary quilt raffle. We will draw the winning ticket tonight. And a, yay! <laughs> and a very special thanks to Lynn Bruno for crafting our beautiful quilt titled From Few Came Many. The design and colors representing the history of the suffragist movement are perfect. The anniversary quilt is currently on display, as Erica explained earlier, in the window of String Theory Shop in downtown Glen Ellen. And we hope that you will take, this, take time this week to check out the full display. A special thanks to Sarah Allen and her committee for many hours of work on displays around town. After we draw the winning ticket and announce the winner's name, I'll contact you by phone or email and arrange how you can pick up the quilt. 
I'm excited to be drawing the winning ticket on this special date, the anniversary of the certification and formal adoption of the 19th Amendment and the kickoff event of LWVGE's New Year. And now for the big moment. <laughs> my, my lovely assistant, my husband is here. <laughs> And the winner is Nicole DeJoris. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So wow. congratulations, Nicole. At first, I had a little trouble reading your handwriting, but um, then I, I <laughs> so maybe we need to have it certified. But um, no, Nicole DeJoris, congratulations, and I'll be in touch with you. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thanks so much, uh, Rita. That was, uh, has been an amazing journey with that quilt. Yes. Wow. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rita and Allison, for co-chairing that committee. Um, now I'd like to welcome Ginger Wheeler, who's a longtime league member. She actually got me to join league. Um, and she will present our 2019 League Award for these. Here you go, Ginger. Ginger, I'm going to unmute you and then I will share the screen. Okay. Hey. All right. So Hi, everybody. Thanks for letting me do this. This has been really fun to chair the awards committee this year along with um, Patty Denny and Karen Gores. So, uh, since the year 2000, the League of Women Voters of Glen Ellen has recognized outstanding volunteer efforts from among its hundreds of members with annual, an annual awards program. Selected by committee from nominations submitted by the membership to recognize special activity from among its volunteer membership for outstanding work during the past calendar year, the awards are usually bestowed upon the recipient during the League's annual meeting dinner. Of course, we didn't have the dinner this year, so now we are going to announce the awards at our fall kickoff, which is tonight. So the following awards have been designated to the following recipients for their outstanding volunteer efforts benefiting the civic process and the citizens of the village of Glen Ellen. First, I'd like to read about the Susan B. Anthony Voter Service Award. This is given annually to a league member who has contributed in the realm of voter service. The 2020 Susan B. Anthony Voter Service Awardee is Gail Bernstein. Although the league has been bestowing this award on a member for the past 18 years, this is only the second time a member has received this award for the second time, and this is the first time a member has received the award two years consecutively. So Kristen Malone, had written about Gail in her nomination. Through Gail's efforts, the League has registered over 270 new voters, attracted over 72 volunteers to help register voters, and has spent nearly 200 volunteer hours in the work of voter service. She has planned and executed 16 voter registration events for the public and membership and worked with candidates on helping voters understand the issues and the voting process. Bernstein is also being recognized due to her outreach with the College of DuPage, where the League has conducted multiple registration and election information events. She also trained and organized registrars on the special task of assisting retirement home and nursing home residents as they renew their voter registration, a new responsibility for League of Women Voters. Since the pandemic, Bernstein has taken to utilizing virtual resources to conduct her efforts. This fall, will be challenging due to the COVID restrictions, but leak preparation will allow an easy transition to social distancing methods for voters to participate in the voting process. So congratulations to Gail on being named the 2020 Susan B. Anthony Voter Service Award recipient. Next, I'd like to talk about our outstanding new League Member Service Award. This award is bestowed on a new league member who has jumped in to take a leadership role. The 2020 new member service award goes to, drum roll, Nicole DeJoris. 
our quilt winner. Hey. Um, Erica nominated Nicole and said, as a new member, actually I got several nominations for Nicole. As a new member, Nicole immediately raised her hand and helped the league set up its first Instagram account at LWV Glen Ellen, all one word, no spaces. <laughs> uh, please follow it, which has attracted over 168 followers. She took over league's Facebook and Twitter accounts as well, which are instrumental in attracting other new members. Upon learning, yep. That's great. So congratulations, Nicole. Um, Phyllis, so the next award is named for a former Village of Glen Allen president, village board member, and very active league member, Phyllis Renfro. It's the Phyllis Renfro Community Action Award. The 2020 award goes to a member who has been exceptionally active in the league and an activist in the community. That person is, drum roll please, Sarah Allen. Allen has, <laughs> yes. Allen has been a league member for over three decades and has held numerous leadership roles during her tenure. For 2019 to 2020, Sarah was active building connections with our local community. She has developed a relationship with the Glen Allen Public Library, the Glen Allen Bookstore, as well as the media. According to um, Erica, who nominated her, Sarah works tirelessly to increase League's presence through publicity and building relationships. She is always thinking of new ways to increase awareness of the League in our community, and she is always our always-on photographer as well. Allen's efforts this year included communication about the 100th anniversary event celebrating the 19th Amendment. Um, she made sure the League's anniversary quilt raffle was visible, and she helped to get a storefront window dedicated to educating the public about the 100th anniversary. Um, as you know, you can view this at String Theory Yarn Company on Main Street. Um, so Sarah Allen said, the League is an important organization, not only in our community, but also statewide and for the nation. It is an organization dear to my heart for its principles its drive to action and its dedicated volunteers who are working to promote democracy by registering voters and with voter education. It means a great deal to me as an individual and as a community member. So that concludes our awards presentation. I don't know if you've got that picture. Actually, Ginger, I was just gonna tell you, I am not able to screen share. And so these great pictures that we took, I uh, will be on our website as soon as they get posted in the next couple of days. And then also there will be a highlight in the uh, member newsletter, The Voter coming out. So please go to our website and uh, take a look and learn more about these three awardees. And many, many thanks to Ginger and her committee for um, putting together this uh, great, uh, set of awardees, uh, even in this crazy time where we couldn't all be together at our annual meeting. So Ginger, thank you. You're welcome. And I have to tell you, all three awardees got a really nice plaque and some fresh flowers to thank them for all their work on behalf of the league. Good, good. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ginger. And congratulations again to Gail and Sarah and Nicole. And Nicole on the quilt too. That's wonderful. She's a pretty, pretty new member. So now a bigger drum roll for our um, featured speaker tonight is Jean Kesmerick, DuPage County clerk, who I've actually known for 25 years because our kids went to preschool together. So um, Jean, Ms. Kesmerick was elected to the office of DuPage County clerk in November 2018. Her office has 42 employees working in elections, vital records, and revenue. Starting in 2005, Ms. Kesmerick became passionate about election reform, working to improve accountability, reliability, security, transparency, and fairness. She attended over 150 DuPage County Election Commission board meetings. That's a lot of board meetings. And in addition to a variety of state, county, and local government board meetings. Over the years, she's made frequent comments, wrote many letters to the editor, published and brought issues forward which have led to legislative and policy amendments. She's received many awards over the years, including, just to name a few, co-recipient co of the Rosemary Martin Democracy in Action finalist 
in 2008 and co-recipient of the Rosemary Martin Democracy in Action Award in 2010, both, of, both from the League of Women Voters of Naperville. And as I said, those are just a few of the awards. Prior to becoming our clerk, she worked in communications for corporate, nonprofit, and private consulting. And on a personal note, um, Ms. Kaczmarek, she's a 33-year resident of Glen Ellen. She's married to her husband, Michael. They have two grown children and apparently a very cute puppy. So thank you so much. The, the um, theme of tonight's program is voting rights and how we make sure democracy works in 2020. So thank you, Jean. Thank you so much for this invitation, League of Women Voters of my hometown of 33 years, Glenn Ellen. Thank you. I am so honored to be your guest on the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. This is my third League of Women Voters event today. And special congratulations to Gail, Nicole, and Sarah on your well-deserved awards tonight. I've met many of you through the years. I only wish I could see you in person right now. Prior to the pandemic, I frequently invited members of the public to the county clerk's office. And thanks to Zoom, I can bring a little bit of my office to you. I've surrounded myself with suffragette artwork. Every day is Women's Equality Day here. The faces of Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Carrie Chapman Catt, Alice Paul, and DuPage's own Ellen Martin serve as a constant reminder of what got me here and the job I must do. A very tough act to follow. And this was a gift from Marty Keller, former chair of the DuPage Republicans. So, can you read it? Yep. Okay. That was a surprise. Yeah. The county clerk's office has faced unprecedented challenges in 2020, and I am proud to say that my staff has risen to meet those challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic struck at one of the worst possible times for our office. The initial spread of the virus and the public panic began to build through the first two weeks of March, leading into the primary election on the 17th. While those states with elections earlier in March dodged some of the serious impacts of the pandemic, and those states with later elections at least had some knowledge of what problems to expect, Illinois and other states voting on March 17th were forced to respond with little warning and support. The situation was so dire that Ohio's governor made the last minute decision to postpone that state's primary. Our election in DuPage County had to go on as scheduled. In the days leading to election day, we lost 17 polling places and 60, 60 percent of our election judges. An emergency pay increase brought in new judges, some coming on board on the very morning of the election. When hand sanitizer couldn't be found anywhere, Deputy Clerk of Elections Scott McKay called the owner of Mineral Masters in West Chicago, who made us a rush order. Scott drove to Ikea for cases of applicator bottles for polling places, which were later filled by his wife and kids in their kitchen in Wheaton. The bipartisan final vote by mail count, retabulation, and certification were completed on deadline despite the stay-at-home order and 10-person room limitation. The staff of the county clerk's office demonstrated the courage, professionalism, and dedication I have had the privilege of observing every day since taking office. Governor Pritzker signed SB 1863 just two months ago. 
our election division has been very busy to comply with the new law. Most significantly, the law calls for the expansion of vote by mail due to COVID-19. All recent voters in Illinois were to be sent vote by mail applications. Early voting hours are to be increased. Election day, November 3rd has been declared a state holiday. Schools will be made available as polling places where necessary. A large central polling place must be established for election day. And finally, a bipartisan panel of three judges will determine if a vote by mail ballot can be rejected. All told, our office will receive an additional 3.5 million in CARES funding to our budget, roughly 1.5 million from the Illinois State Board of Elections and at least 2 million from DuPage. I'm very pleased that County Board Chairman Dan Cronin and the County Board have provided bipartisan support for funding to make our 2020 election run smoothly. This funding has paid for a shiny new mail sorter and other equipment to specifically support vote by mail operations. The printing of vote by mail applications and envelopes, postage, staffing, PPE, and other necessary resources. Our office went beyond the mandate by sending out applications to all registered voters. We will also be able to provide postage to return applications and ballots. To date, we have received 109,000 vote by mail ballot applications. That's well over three times the total requested in 2016 and two and a half times requested in 2018. And it's still just August. I would not be surprised if we have 150,000 total applications by the end of September. And if COVID-19 cases rise as expected, the number by election day is anyone's guess. We have about 622,000 registered voters. I'm gonna talk a few minutes about what voters can do to help make vote by mail run smoothly in 2020. Important points will be repeated, please forgive me. First, I strongly encourage voters who intend to vote by mail to apply for a ballot early, as in now. The easiest way to do so is securely online through our website. We launched our online application the day the governor signed the bill. It just takes a minute to apply online. Or voters can fill in the application sent out last month. Voters can fill out the application and drop it in the mail without a stamp, or if they prefer, they can place the applications in envelopes and mail them back with a stamp. Then voters must be reminded to be patient. Ballots by law cannot be mailed out until September 24th. Another four to five days must be allowed for delivery so don't expect your ballot until close to October 1st. Calling our office will not expedite this initial process. I'm sorry, our election office has been swamped with calls. When the ballot arrives, it will look just like the paper ballot in a polling place where you fill in the ovals with a dark pen. Spread the word. Please complete the ballot as soon as possible and place it in the envelope provided and seal it. On the back of the envelope is a red box you must sign with your signature and it will be compared with your voter registration signature for verification. So that quick little squiggle you make for credit card purchases at the grocery store won't work unless of course you use that identical squiggle when you register to vote. Postage will be paid for 
so no worries about hunting for stamps. Then just drop it in a mailbox. Done. Ballot envelopes that are returned to our office unsealed, unsigned, or with a signature that doesn't reasonably resemble your voter registration signature will be rejected. If rejected, you will be notified and be given the opportunity to correct the problem. But it's so much easier and faster to follow the simple instructions the first time and be done with it. These simple instructions will be explained in an insert going out with each ballot, both in English and Spanish. And it's printed in bright blue and red. You can't miss it. If you're planning to vote by mail, here's why we're asking you to do so early. In the big vote by mail states, registered voters are generally not sent applications. Voters in these states are sent ballots weeks in advance. Those ballots start to be returned right away and most are received by election day. The vote by mail states know what's coming and that's why it works. Illinois is not a vote by mail state per se. Vote by mail has been greatly expanded this year in response to the pandemic. We don't know what's coming, only that it will be big. We have an application process prior to sending out the ballots and processing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of applications is a massive time consuming process and requires the work of many individuals. We have a dozen people processing applications all day long right now and have had for weeks. It becomes much more challenging the closer we get to election day. And if applications are coming in late October, then it means ballots are also going out in late October as well. Vote by mail is not the best choice for procrastinators. Those waiting until the last two weeks of October to vote should consider going to early voting or election day for um, voting. By law, voters can still apply by vote by mail until October 29th, but that's pretty risky. That deadline needs to be revisited. We've all heard the term flatten the curve a lot this year. This phrase also pertains to vote by mail. To flatten the curve, those who are planning to vote by mail should apply securely on our website now or return a completed application arriving in, which has already arrived in mailboxes a month ago. The election division will be able to process the application and have the ballot sent out by September 24th on September 24th. And once it's received four or five days later, please complete it and drop it in the mail right away. The more ballots we receive early, the better, and the curve will be flattened instead of spiking near election day. On that note, I will soon be forwarding you a graphic our office created called Flatten the Curve of Vote by Mail and please share this graphic broadly on social media. Thank you. Note that I have been urging everyone to apply now for vote by mail, complete the ballot ASAP and drop it in a mailbox. Vote by mail is designed to work with the US Postal Service. Post Office was enthusiastic and proud to be fulfilling the service of vote by mail this year. Our office has had meetings with the regional post office director long before recent developments. For those who apply early and complete their ballots right away, I don't anticipate a problem. After all, we're depending on the post office to send the ballots to you in the first place. And I, Jean Kaczmarek, DuPage County Clerk, 
will be sending back my vote by mail ballot through the USPS mailbox. I'll have some pictures taken. For those who haven't completed their vote by mail ballots until the last days, however, or would feel more comfortable returning their ballots another way, we have the following options for returning them. Drop boxes will be at the parking lot and within the main entrance of the 421 County Farm Road, Wheaton County campus. Vote by mail ballots may be dropped off at the County Clerk Election Division office or inside early voting and election day polling places. Altogether, nearly 300 drop boxes. For the 2020 election, we're offering ballot tracks. Voters choosing vote by mail can go to our home page of our election website and click track your vote by mail ballot. This will take you to a service that will do exactly that. Voters can opt to have updates via email or text on the path of their vote by mail ballot. By signing up, you will know when the ballot has been mailed to you, when it has been received at our office, and when it's been officially accepted by election judges. Only 1,300 voters have signed up for ballot tracks so far out of 109,000 applicants. If you have applied for vote by mail, then do the next step by signing up for ballot tracks on the button directly under our video on the home page. And while you're hearing heavy emphasis on vote by mail tonight, please keep in mind that it's one of several options to vote. We still have conventional early voting and election day. Absentee early voting begins September 24th at the fairgrounds. It used to be at the election division, but now it's going to be at the fairgrounds. With absentee early voting, you will be issued a paper ballot. And by the way, this is how I chose to vote during the primary. And in those early days, two, three, four weeks before the election, there were hardly any voters in line. Hint. Again, that's absentee early voting. You can vote on paper, and this option starts September 24th at the fairgrounds. Regular early voting starts October, 20, October 19th, and this is where you vote on the touch screens located throughout DuPage. We're working right now to increase that number beginning in the underserved areas of the county. Those new lo lo locations will be publicized when completed very soon. And finally, there's election day itself on November 3rd at your assigned polling place where you can vote on paper or touch screen. I wanna make this important point. With the expansion of vote by mail in Illinois and around the country, gone are the days where election results are pretty much done on election night. With potentially tens of thousands of ballots arriving to our office after November 3rd, it's very possible that results in some races will flip between November 3rd and the following 14 day period prior to certification. And because I have your attention, I have a few big asks. While we intend to pay a um, supplement to our election judges with CARES Act funding in the 2020 election, we need your help to support a permanent increase in election judge pay. DuPage's base rate of $130 for a 16 hour day plus an extra hour for polling place set up the day before is just simply too low. It's significantly lower than many counties. Before COVID-19, Illinois County clerks were seeking an increase in the state reimbursement for election judge pay. 
we had to switch gears with the pandemic. We could use your help. And also, please contact your state and federal leaders to discuss what can be done to fund our elections in 2021 and beyond. While we have a bump in available funds in 2020, additional funds have not been set aside for 2021. Also, our election infrastructure needs to be restored and maintained. The 100th anniversary of women's right to vote has arrived in the same year of what may be an election of historic high voter turnout, even during a pandemic. Three things happened to my grandmother in 1920. She got married. She started to wear face powder, shocking. And she turned 21, making her eligible to vote for the first time. In her lifetime, her vote brought electricity to her little farm in the Ozarks through the WPA project. Her vote brought her independence, dignity, and hope with Medicare and Social Security. And while she stood with her granddaughter by her side on her front porch on a hot July night in 1969, gazing upward, her vote put a man on the moon. In the 2018 election, nearly half of eligible women chose not to exercise their precious right to vote. They missed the opportunity to shape the world for themselves and their families. They missed out on building something lasting and beautiful. Never take the right to vote for granted. Thank you. And I'm eager to answer all of your questions. And I'm sure that you're all dying to know all about the county clerk's work with vital records and property tax calculations. So fire away. Fire away. But Thank first, I, th I think we need another toast, don't you? That's right. Yes, cheers. Thank you so much for your presentation. And you've got your working together mug. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Kristen, for dropping that off. Thank you so much, Jean, and your staff for the work you do on behalf of the people of DuPage County. Um, thank you for being willing to take some questions. The way that we will do this is our uh, Glen Ellen League members, Karen Daly and Nicole DeJoris, will read the questions. Uh, we had many questions come in in advance, and uh, we see we have three questions already on our Q&A that I think are already even duplicated in our uh, questions that came in. Um, and uh, we invite you to continue to add questions to Q&A. Uh, and we will um, have any unanswered questions that come in uh, sent to Jean so that she can respond to those and we can post those on our website. Uh, yes. So uh, Karin, I'm gonna unmute you. May I just walk over there for 10 seconds so the lights will come back on? Yes, I could see that the lights went out. A good, good, good ecological. All right, and Nicole, I'm muting you. That's better. <laughs> right, very good. So I'll turn it over to Karen and Nicole, and we'll take questions uh, till about 8.15. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, Jean, we have uh, about 12 pre-questions uh, that were submitted prior to our meeting this evening. And then um, to all the attendees, if you have additional questions, please feel free to fill, to use the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. We'll get to as many as we can this evening, and then we'll be um, you know, sending out answers. Uh, Jean's going to be gracious enough to answer all of our questions, and we'll send those to you at a you know, future date. Uh, first question for you, Jean, is are voters notified if their mail-in ballot is rejected? Yes, they are. I think I explained that earlier, but yes, um, they will have the opportunity to come in and, and fix it. Um, usually they're notified within a couple of days if it's um, been rejected and, and sooner if possible. Okay, great, thank you. Um, you also mentioned this earlier, but if you could just 
reiterate, um, you know, is there a way to track uh, applications of um, online of ballots that are submitted? Is there a way of tracking the ballot you mean, I think? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. The question is, I believe there's a way to track my application and my ballot online. Is that correct? And how do I do it? Right. That's through ballot tracks. And there is a button just below the video on our home page. And it only takes 30 seconds to fill out that little um, request form. And you can request that you, you would be notified through email or a text. And then after your um, ballot has been mailed, you'll get a notification. And then after you put it back into the system through a mailbox or a Dropbox, um, you'll be notified when we have received it. And then you'll also be notified after it's been accepted. But only 1,300 people have signed up for this beautiful tracking system. So spread the word. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, so um, third question. Will there be the same number, fewer, or more polling places for this election? The number of polling places on November 3rd will probably stay very close to the same. Um, it's close to 265. We've had to do a little bit of merging into some schools. So um, that's very close to, to what we've had in the past, in the recent past anyway. And then we're increasing our vote by mail by 50%. Great. Okay. Um, next question. Are ballots counted or recorded as they come in, or do you have to wait until election day to count votes? We can start feeding them into the optical scan machines 15 days prior to the election, but we cannot tally them until after 7 p.m. on election night. So no one, no one knows the outcome until after 7 p.m. on election night. Okay. Uh, one person who submitted a question said that they had read that the official vote will be recorded on December 4th. Can you please explain what this means? No. <laughs> I'm, December 4th. I don't know what that means. Um, the certification takes place 14 days after November 3rd, so that's the 17th of November. Okay, uh, next question. So regarding vote by mail drop boxes in DuPage County, how many and how many are there and where will they be located? We will have one outdoor drop box. And by the way, it's beautiful. If you can think <laughs> of a drop box as being beautiful. This is, it weighs like 2000 pounds. Um, it's uh, going to be in the south parking lot of the 421 County Farm Road Administration Building. And it will be very obvious, all red, white, and blue. And, um, it's going to have lights on it at, at night. It's going to have 24 seven security with cameras. So we feel really good about that outdoor drop box. We're also gonna have one in the, the main entrance of the uh, 421 building. It's between two sets of double doors. So you don't actually have to come into the building and um, then you could also drop off your ballot at the election revision office. And finally, we're going to have drop boxes at all the early voting sites and election day polling places. Thank you. Um, next question, can you describe how 
the vote the votes by mail are counted. Um, one uh, person who submitted a question said that in the old days, when she served as an election judge, uh, they came to the polling places to be counted. So will that still happen? They or do they still do it that way? They won't be counted. The vote by mail ballots will not be counted at the polling places. They'll be collected at the polling places and then brought into our office. And the, uh, the counting of all the vote by mail ballots will be done in the auditorium. Okay. Uh, you touched on this question earlier in your presentation. Um, so I'll just say what the question is. Uh, and then, you know, let us know if there are additional, um, you know, errors, but it's about the errors that you mentioned, like if somebody didn't sign or if they don't, um, you know, seal their ballot are some of the most common errors. Are there any other common errors that you see with um, vote by mail or absentee ballots? Um, well, some people like to tell us on the ballot why they're voting the way they are. <laughs> uh, that's not really helpful. They don't have to do that. It, it, I guess it doesn't really bother anything, but you know, it's not gonna change um, the way we're counting the ballots. Um, I would just say with vote by mail, the main thing this year especially is just to apply early. I, I am concerned about the procrastinators. And um, to me, that would be a very big mistake because we, 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 we can only process them so quickly. And the post office needs to have time to get the ballot to the voters home. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question. So it has been reported that many letters or bills have been, um, or that uh, people in DuPage County receive uh, no longer have postmarks. So this raises the question in terms of validating whether ballots have been mailed, you know, or postmarked on or before November 3rd. So how will this be addressed? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because I was wondering the same thing, and we met with the regional director of uh, Northern Illinois at the USPS, and um, she assured us that nationwide ballots will have postmarks. And we were also assured by the DuPage postmaster that he will make a special effort to make sure that's done in DuPage as well. Great, thank you. Um, next question, is there still a shortage of poll watchers and are young people volunteering as anticipated given election day is now a school holiday? I think you mean election judges, not poll watchers. Um, Yes, thank you. Well, we're hoping that come uh, the end of October, we'll have 2,500 to 3,000 election judges willing to work. Um, right now, we have 3,600 Democratic election judges signed up and 1,700 Republican election judges. So we could use some more Republican judges. And while those numbers sound outstanding, you have to keep in mind that not all of those judges will be available to work on election day. So um, we're always recruiting. We have a button on the homepage to click if you want to sign up to be an election judge. And, and keep in mind that we, we lost 60% of our election judges that were signed up and ready to go uh, shortly before the primary. Okay, thank you. Um, 
are there concerns among state and local election officials about the effects the current federal administration and others are having on voters in terms of the postal services ability to process ballots in a timely way in November? Um, could you repeat that again? Sure, sure. Are there concerns among state and local election officials about the effects the current federal administration and others are having on voters in terms of the Postal Service's ability to process ballots in a timely way in November? I believe that um, the ballots will get to us if, if voters apply early enough. Um, but we're ready for um, the possibility that they won't. And we do have the drop boxes available. I, I, I know that a lot of uh, local um, county clerks and, and county clerks around the state are also providing uh, the drop boxes, especially for people who are returning their ballots in the later days of October and of course, November. We're doing the best we can. Um, the post office was very enthusiastic about partnering with um, county clerks and fulfilling this service. Great, thank you. Um, next question, is there a way to update our signature on file uh, that will be used to validate our mail-in ballots? Well, in that case, I, um, I would suggest that the voter update their voter registration by completing a new voter registration form. And I can email that to you if you'd like. Um, the ballot will not be thrown out, however, if it's challenged based on the signature. Um, for SB 1863, the voter can uh, email their voter registration form to our office so they would not need to uh, come to our office or go to a polling location. They could just do it in advance and take care of it that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last question I have for the pre-questions or the questions that were submitted ahead of time. Is this true that election officials feel this way? For example, on August 25th on Chicago Tonight, Jean Ives said she does not have confidence in mail-in voting. She said election officials do not have confidence that will go smoothly. Even in primary, a number of ballots were not counted. She specified 125,000 were spoiled because they were not filled out correctly. 125,000 where in the state? Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't be more, I can't be more specific. I'm just you know, going off what was submitted. I can repeat that. Would that be helpful? Sure. Okay, uh, is it true that election officials feel this way? So on August 25th, on Chicago Tonight, Jean Ives said she does not have confidence in mail-in voting. She said election officials do not have confidence it will go smoothly. Even in primary, a number of ballots were not counted. She specified 125,000 were spoiled because they were not filled out correctly. Well, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure where um, this information came from that she's referring to. Um, sure, I would say that county clerks feel like they've got a big job ahead of them and they feel like this is indeed a challenge and something brand new that we've never had to deal with before. But we're very, very confident that we will get the job done, absolutely. Um, as for the other things, I, 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 this is the first I've heard about the 
the 125,000 oil ballots. I, I guess I need a, more of a reference for that. I, I think that's about the best I can do with that question. If you submit it, maybe, uh, you know, and email it to me, maybe we could look it over again. Sure. Well, thank you so much. Um, so those are all the pre-questions that I have. And I believe Karen is going to cover any of the live questions that came in. So if Erica, you could unmute Karen and she could review any of the live questions in the Q&A. That'd be great. You're all set, Karen. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, questions that were already answered online, I was able to, uh, to answer those, and, and those are you'll see in the answer tab on the Q&A. Um, one clarification, though, on the drop box at 421 County Road. The question is, is it 24 hour? And I've also been asked, um, is it monitored? It's monitored very, very closely, yes. And it's available 24 seven. Is it video monitored or how is it monitored? There is a camera that points toward that area. We have um, a security guard that sits 24 seven overlooking what that camera is seeing. So yes. And okay. by the way, um, I'm very confident uh, with uh, the selection that we made for uh, Dropbox. Um, I think you'd be impressed. It's going to be installed within the next couple of weeks. Terrific. Um, a related question in terms of the drop boxes that are at the early voting places. Will there be, uh, will you have to uh, stand in line with everyone else or, or will the drop box be a separate line that you can approach and drop it off there? We'll, um, we're working exactly, uh, you know, how to have, you know, that's going to happen, but I don't anticipate that, um, Voters will have to stand in line if they're bringing in their vote by mail ballots. Uh, I believe that they'll just be allowed in, quickly deposited, and go on their way. Great, thank you. Um, if you have received a mail in ballot, is it possible, uh, and you want to change your mind, let's say, is it possible you can go in and, and, and vote live? Yes, you can. However, we um, ask that you bring in your unvoted ballot and envelope to the polling place and then surrender it to the election judge. And then when you do that, then you'll be able to vote normally. If you show up and you left it at home or you lost it, well, there's not much we can do on election day other than give you a provisional ballot. A provisional ballot will then be verified after the election and it will be counted if it's verified. Terrific and, and um, clearly we'll have to also confirm that with people that they can get a provisional ballot if they're unable to vote. Uh, the next question is, will Jean's uh, video on vote by mail procedure be on the league website so we can share it on social media? It was so helpful. So I'm, I don't know if she means this um, presentation or your video that is on the DuPage site, I'm not sure. But both of them, so the, the one that's on the DuPage site, we have shared via social and it's also on our website and we will also be sharing this uh, video there. So um, the next question is um, there has been so much emphasis on mail-in ballots. I intend to vote in person on election day. If I feel safe doing this, even in pandemic times, is there any reason why I shouldn't do so? And when the voting at the voting booth, should I select paper ballot or electronic ballot? I cannot make all those decisions for the voter. That's something that they're just going to have to do themselves. Um, 
one of the challenges that I've been facing over the past six months is that now I have to become an expert in public health. Um, we are going to have PPE at the uh, polling places and we are going to be encouraging people to, uh, the voters to be wearing masks. Um, as for, um, as for whether or not to choose paper or touch screen, I, I, again, that's just something that the voter's going to have to research and decide for him or herself. Um, if, if you come to the fairgrounds during early voting, you will have the opportunity to vote on paper. Otherwise, all the other early voting sites in DuPage County will have published rates. And then on election day, you'll have the option to vote on paper or touch screen. Terrific, thank you. There's a question of whether there's an option for us to volunteer as election judges so for no pay. Uh, this could offset the low pay for paid election judges. Uh, there are a, a few election judges who choose not to be paid, um, but what we need you to do first of all is sign up to be an election judge and then whether or not you're going to be paid can be decided discussed at another time. Is there a place on your website to be able to sign up to be an election judge? Yes. Mm -hmm. On the home page, underneath the video, there's a button that you can click that will take you to that application. And speaking of election judges, the question about what steps will you take to make it safe for poll workers and election judges? And yeah, you do still need them, and I think you answered that one already. To still need them, but, but what's the safety precautions for them? Well, we're going to be encouraging social distancing. We're going to be having the, the circles on the floor. Um, we're going to be encouraging everyone to please wear masks. We're going to have um, uh, cleaning done at all the, the polling places. And uh, we are also having uh, other forms of PPE. I'm sorry, I can't think of all of them on the top mm -hmm. of my head. Will there, will there be shields for the people taking the registrations? We will be having lots of glass shields, yes. Mm -hmm. um, related to that, I got a text question, someone who didn't want to uh, leave their name. <laughs> Um, but they said that the president mentioned that there may be troops being sent to some polling locations. Is there any concern about that? Any place in, in DuPage County? Well, that's the first I heard that one. So um, it, it, I, I'm not sure I can respond to everything that's coming out of Washington on a pretty frequent basis here. Mm -hmm. Uh, next question, do you run the mail-in ballots through the voting machine? Not at the polling place. They will okay. run through opti optical scan machines in the auditorium at the 421 County Farm Road building. Mm -hmm. There's also a question about needing volunteers, whether you need volunteers to help count mail-in ballots. Yes, um, that is uh, primarily going to be done by election judges. And so when you sign up to be an election judge, you can check off what, uh, what types of, of work you're willing to do, but yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have, um, so are the vote by mail ballots counted on the same optical scan machines as usual ballots? Yes. And so how many, this person goes on to ask, how many uh, uh, optical scan machines does the election commission have for vote by mail specifically? We, uh, that hasn't been determined, we'll, we'll use as many as it takes, but 
we could have uh, over 50 optical scan mm -hmm. in the auditorium. Okay, this person goes on to ask if you know what the maximum ballot volume that the machines can handle. Um, you'll have to send in that question. I, I have okay, to work on that. Yeah. Um, so, and somebody asked if they can still use the Dropbox on election day. Yes, up until seven o'clock. And then all the polling places are going to be set at seven. And the election division will not be accepting any more ballots after seven. And um, no one will be able to, um, not already in line, um, be able to drop it off at 421 Farm Road drop box. Okay, great. We just have a couple more questions here, and I know we're right on uh, pretty close to our time limit. Um, we have uh, a kind of a, a question that was somewhat asked before, but what safeguards are in place to keep people from voting by mail and then showing up in person and voting again? Well, first of all, that would be a felony. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, but each voter has a unique number. And once that ballot has been sent in, then the poll pad that is at the polling place will alert the election judge that that voter has already cast a ballot. Done. Terrific. And I have one personal question. I have an 80-year-old father who's been an election judge uh, in Lyle for decades, um, and I'm concerned about his health. Are you going to actively try to encourage younger people and potentially take some of the older people? And We value our um, experienced, knowledgeable election judges so much, um, and we, we need them. That's going to have to be a decision by the, uh, the election judge and his or her family. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly understandable that someone of a, a certain age or has a uh, or is at high risk would say would on this election. Perfectly understandable, and it doesn't mean that we'll never call again. Terrific. Thank you. And we've had a number of people thanking you, which I'm sure Erica and Kristen will be doing momentarily. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen and Nicole, also for uh, getting through all of these great questions, and Jean for giving really great and yet succinct answers, <laughs> which is very difficult to do. So thank you so much. Uh, and um, we really appreciate you uh, being here tonight. Um, again, on behalf of uh, uh, all the work that you do for DuPage County. So I'll turn this back over to Kristen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jean. Um, I would like to um, introduce our voter services directors, Sean Fasoulis and Bernie Lazuski. And they would like to highlight some important information about upcoming candidate forums and the elections coming up. All right, Bernie, I just unmuted you and uh, Sean as well. Say hi, Sean. <laughs> I'm Bernie and I am a co-chair voter services um, person for Glen Ellen uh, League of Women Voters. And Sean and I would like to share with you our plan for candidate forums during this time of COVID-19. Uh, we just heard great information from Jean Kaczmarek about voting during a pandemic and what it will be like. And we heard some things will be, you know, kind of the same, but there will be some changes and some adjustments have been made. And the same is true for our forums. So I'm going to share my screen and start filling you in on what we have planned. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so um, all our candidate forums this year will be conducted via Zoom webinar. So that's the format we're using tonight. The candidates, the moderator will be all in separate locations and attendees will be viewing the form from their homes. Despite the Zoom webinar, the format for the forms will stay true to the league requirements and will feel quite familiar to you. The forums will be nonpartisan voter education events. There will be a league trained moderator from outside the district for each event. You know, the candidates will have their time to make opening and closing statements and respond um, to the questions posed to them. The questions will be vetted by the league for appropriateness and to avoid duplication. For anyone who might not be familiar with league forums, they differ a bit from a debate. Each candidate is given equal opportunity to respond to each question in a predetermined time frame. And candidates are not allowed to engage uh, with each other during the forum. So we've had to make some, a few adjustments. Of course, it's, it's virtual. Um, in order to appropriately vet forum questions, no questions will be submitted during the live forum. So there's not gonna be any chat or Q&A up like there is today. Um, we are asking voters to submit questions in advance of the forums. And that can be done by sending an email to Sean and myself. And you see our email up there, the voter services um, uh, Gmail account. So um, you do have to register to view the forum live. Now, of We've always recorded the forum, so they will be recorded and posted on our website and social media. So to view the forum live, um, you will register. And to do that, you go to our website. Well, let me back up. <laughs> Here's what we have planned so far. There are two candidate forums that we have scheduled. Um, we are, they're here on your screen, the Illinois House District 48 and um, Illinois 6th Congressional District. You can see the dates and times there. For these two uh, forums, we are requesting voters to submit questions now and to submit them by September 1st. We are planning additional forums. We're working on scheduling additional forums for additional races, and you'll want to check our website uh, to keep up to date on that. So there's our website address to register for a candidate forum. You would go there. Currently, we have registration open for Illinois 48 candidate forum. So when you go to our website, there's our home page. You can see the on the left side events where the red arrow is. You would click on that. It'll take you to the pages of our events. You would find the form you're registering for. And you can see it says this link. That's where you would click to register for that forum. So if you have questions about that registration process, um, you can email them again to Sean and myself at the uh, email I just shared. I'll share it again at the end here. But before I uh, wrap this up, I do want to talk to you about a very important voter resource. Um, it's the Illinois Voter Guide, operated by the League of Women Voters of Illinois. And there's the website address for it. You can see all the fabulous information you can get from there. In addition to being able to research your ballot, know what's on your ballot, get candidate information, there's links right now. If you need to register to vote, check your voter registration, apply for a vote by mail ballot, you can gain all that. Um, gain the links to do all those things at the Illinois Voter Guide. So again, I hope you'll all use this resource and share it with all the Illinois voters you know. All right. And before I wrap it up and pass it back to Erica, I want to just reiterate, please vote early and make your plan to vote. Um, Jean talked a lot about this. You know that countywide in-person early voting will start October 19th. Please, if you're going to vote by mail, get those uh, applications in now if you haven't already done so. And uh, look for your ballots, probably like Jean said, you know, starting in October, early October. And do not delay completing your ballot and filling it out if you're voting by mail. And you know all the options for how to return it. So again, here's just um, information on the links I shared and the email address for voter services for Glen Ellen. Thank you.
Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Sean, so much. I just want to say that during election time, Kristen and I have talked about this a lot, um, our voter services co-directors are working overtime. And um, we can't thank you enough, Sean and Bernie, certainly from the league, but also from members of our league and community members who uh, really um, uh, take advantage of all the work that you do to get educated about uh, who they're voting for and the issues. So thank you both from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it. And go to the website. It is amazing. So thank you for that. And to Michelle Peterson, one of our uh, communications team members. All right, so um, you can see that our league is focused on the critical work of voter education and voter engagement. Tonight is a great example of that. Another really special thank you to our communications team, Karen Daly, our VP for communications, Sarah Allen, Nicole DeJoris and Michelle Peterson. Uh, please make sure you go to our social media. Literally, there is something on there new every day or every other day. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to get caught up on what's happening around uh, uh, the elections, but also um, all of the work going on uh, with our league. And uh, make sure that you go on to check our events for this year. Um, a reminder to our fellow League members to get your ticket to join the League of Women Voters of Illinois on Thursday, September 24th from 12 to 1, a virtual event to celebrate our 100th anniversary as we power the vote. Uh, there'll be a panel of experts to explore what needs to be done to activate and protect the vote and also achieve equity at the ballot box. So go to lwvil.org slash power the vote. A special welcome to um, brand new members. I'm seeing, Chris and I are seeing some of the names in our attendee list and um, uh, we can't thank you enough for joining and uh, we're so glad to have you be a part of this. You can see there's lots to do. Um, so uh, thank you for joining uh, us tonight. Finally, uh, along with our September events, uh, there is uh, a scheduled on October 8th at the Glen Ellen Historical Society, a program titled Votes for Women, the 72 year struggle for women's suffrage presented by Leslie Goddard. Uh, check their website for updates. I know I go there every week or so just to see what's happening, uh, but they're um, still planning to have the events and it'll be physically distanced and all that, um, all that important uh, safety measure as well, but check GEHS, and we thank them uh, for letting us partner with them on that event. Kirsten, Kristen, let me unmute you and we'll close up. Lastly, I would like to thank Jean for her wonderful presentation tonight. I especially love the story about her grandmother when she was um, 21 and the special, that was, that was wonderful. I loved hearing that. So happy anniversary. 100th anniversary to the League of Women Voters and to our African American sisters who fought for the right for Black women to vote. The League continues to raise awareness about voting rights for all members of our community. Every single person's vote counts. We look forward to another 100 years of exercising your, your vote, your right to vote. Thank you to our panelists and to all who attended this meeting we look forward to seeing you at all of our upcoming community meetings and our September candidate forums. So if you want to raise another glass. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Thank, Thank you. you everybody. And thanks everybody for being here tonight. We have plenty of information for you. Come on back as we continue our work. Thanks, Kristen. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Take care, everybody.